pregnant woman gets fired over text, and Urban Meyer gets away with a three-game suspension. All this on the Ramos Rundown. What's happening, everybody? We back for another episode of the Ramos Rundown. Joel, Josh Ramos here. We got a couple of interesting topics. It's been a crazy week. Headlines, you know, stories left and right. But, but the biggest story is I'm about to graduate college. I know. He's on the Van Wilder plan. Seven years and counting. Yeah, I just didn't have as many hot chicks. And I don't have Ryan Reynolds' body or hair. But working on it. At least one part. He made it a lot farther than I did. I made it... Two semesters. But he's a successful businessman. So net college is not for everybody. We understand that. But I, I had to go the traditional route. I uh, say so it was international relations. International relations, political science. So a whole, a whole lot of malarkey. But nah, it was really fun. Learned about some really cool um, philosophers and, you know, big worldly topics. Because it's international relations. A lot of hoopla. Well, today, today we're talking more about foreign relations. I mean, uh, wow. No, uh, domestic relations. How about say? I'm, I'm smart, I yeah. swear. Yeah, <laughs> so, sure. We're talking about domestic stuff today. So yeah. I think you found a story uh, up like in New Jersey, I think. It's not Jersey. Jersey. It's actually from Jersey Mike's. Um, that is the franchise that is a little bit under fire because in Marysville, Washington. Yeah, never heard of it either. Uh, there was a young woman by the age of 19. Her name is Kamisha Denton. Okay, she, Kamisha. Kamisha, I don't know. It's something that, you know, they, I guess, Sounds put like together. Another, the P.D. Pablo song. Yeah. Keisha, Trina, Siobhan, Monique. Yeah. Okay, Aaron. Hey, Aaron, let's go. <laughs> These people won't understand the reference. So uh, she actually was recently told by her manager um, that, <laughs> let me read you the text message so you guys can get the drip. She goes, can I please get the update of the schedule for her work? Because she works at Jersey Mike's. And he said, hello, I'm sorry to inform you, but it's not going to work out with Jersey Mike's. It's not a good time for us to have someone who is leaving early for maternity leave in several months anyways. You also failed to tell me this during our interview. Good luck to you. So, so they fired her? Well, she was obviously in shock and a little bit of disarray. So she screenshotted this, put it on Facebook, got thousands of shares. And obviously you have some community um, you know, uproar and it got a hold of Jersey Mike's corporation, well, the corporate offices, mm -hmm. and the franchise owner got a hold of it. And they try to fix the problem. They realized like this was a mistake by the manager's doing. Mm -hmm. So they offered her her job back and the franchise owner pretty much had the manager resign. So okay, I mean, pretty pretty much everything took its course, but yeah, she. I think she didn't go back though. No, she did not go back. She actually had a couple of um, job offers that she got from the whole um, incident being shared throughout social media. A lot of people offered her jobs, which is pretty great. I think that the manager obviously did not <laughs> uh, really look at the you laws didn't. because it is illegal to fire someone for being pregnant. But like we're talking, I think we're talking about this off screen. Like you and I agree, like as far as you, it's, it's, you shouldn't fire somebody for having maternity leave yeah. and things like that. But one of the questions that you brought up was how about the lack of disclosure in the interview process? Yeah, I Would that agree. be grounds for, you know, extermination, which mm -hmm. is it's a gray, it's a gray line. It's a very gray area. And I think that technically by law she doesn't well in Washington I don't know if every state is like this but by law she doesn't have to disclose uh, if she's pregnant or not but I think it's more out of you know um, not necessarily decency but it would be nice for the employer to understand that hey when we hire you when are you available first of all and they mm -hmm. say I'm available at this date and they said are there any dates coming up this year that you need off ahead of time mm -hmm. so someone will say yeah I have a doctor's appointment this month yeah. or I have a vacation planned for October or hey I'm not going to work for two months because there's a baby brewing in me it's so just, it's, it's <laughs> that's kind of like common courtesy yeah, in the, the sense is, of an I'm employer sure, knowing I mean I've never I've been fortunate enough to, to be like in the employer side of the spectrum yeah. since basically since I entered the working field, but as an employee, it has to be pretty fearful of like, wow, I have to interview for this job, convince this employer and this company to yeah. like me and hire me. And on top of all that, let them know, uh, I'm having maternity leave. You got to pay me for two months off. Yeah. So I'm sure they're scared. Most employers, you know, they want productivity and efficiency. It's not really efficient to pay somebody not to work. 
So yep. I'm sure it's really scary, scary on, on the mother's part, the mm-hmm. soon to be mother, to let them know that. But it's it's such a gray area, like you said. Nah, it's the gray area, and it's it's hard also to kind of put Jersey Mike in the position that being um, a, a franchise like a McDonald's or Burger King or a lot of these you know fast food chains. They are not necessarily responsible for every one of their managers, Mm -hmm. for every one of their uh, employees. So if one employee steps out of line or manager steps out of line, uh, you can't really blame the whole institution for it. Agreed. Um, And I think that it it went up the chain of command and the franchise owner took appropriate action. Um, But that being said, you have another issue where someone went up the chain, allegedly made appropriate um, decisions when it came to letting their boss know what everything that was happening. And there's a lot of controversy and it's going on in the sports world with uh, Urban Meyer mm-hmm. and the Ohio State football team, him, him just recently getting a three game suspension. Which is in this with NCAA rules and all the scandals that they've had over the last decades, a three game suspension for what's going on there is pretty light. It's pretty, I mean, it can affect the season. I mean, even though the first, the beginning of the games are, are usually against nobody teams. But light in retrospect yeah. to the um, issue yeah. that they for, had. For our listeners out there that aren't really aware of the situation, give them a little quick background on what's going on with Urban Meyer and the Ohio State program. So this has actually been going on for a little while now. Mm-hmm. And Urban Meyer is the head of the Ohio State football team, formerly the head of the Gators uh, of the University of Florida. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, 2001 guy, still. Both of them. 2002. Uh, t- I mean. Uh, the one season 2002 was yeah. a football game. The hurricane, that was ridiculous. The hurricane should have won. That was ridiculous. But, you know, that's, that hurts. But on to serious stuff. So he has an assistant coach mm-hmm. named Zach Smith. And Zach Smith has had issues all the way back to 2009 when he was a assistant coach a graduate assistant with Urban Meyer, and he was married and allegedly was arrested for pushing a pregnant woman, mm-hmm. his wife at the time, yeah. against the wall and was arrested for it. So um, it was aggravated battery, and they pretty much... Uh, Did you drop the charges, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, had the charges dropped. Yeah. So it ended up becoming an issue where there weren't really any charges it was he said, she said. Yeah. So uh, it kind of went away. It kind of went away. Yeah. Um, the issue being that Urban Meyer, knowing that there was kind of like a something fishy going on, there's some fish. more than 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 when people know. When he took yeah. the job at Ohio State, he yeah. also took Zach Smith with him. Yeah. And there's a little background with him. Our our producer, Mr. Miglio, was uh, explaining yeah, to us. Yeah, with the investigative research, he yeah. pointed out that Zach Smith. His great grandfather or grandfather was um, the head coach for Ohio State from seventy nine to eighty seven, mm-hmm. and actually hired Urban Meyer as a graduate assistant. It was yeah. Urban Meyer's entryway into collegiate, you know, mm-hmm. coaching, and had a very close relationship, like almost a second father is yeah. what Urban Meyer considered him, and even spoke, uh, gave a eulogy at Earl Bruce's funeral. So, Urban Meyer has a tie to Zach Smith and his family dating back decades. So it's, yeah. he first came in. As a graduate assistant under Earl Bruce, and then he let his great grandson, I think it was, I think so. or grandson, come in as a graduate assistant under himself. So there's an issue of nepotism, I guess you could say there, oh, yeah. where there's a little bit of favoritism, and you know wanted to give that person an extra yeah. shot. So there's people that that think that might they have a theorize that that might yeah. be a play a role in mm-hmm. Urban Meyer bringing him along in the Gators, mm-hmm. overlooking some other off the field issues, yeah. even bring him in the Ohio State program. Mm-hmm. But I think one of the things that has Urban Meyer in, in hot water is they this whole 2009 incident with Zach Smith that happened in UF wasn't mentioned or discussed or yeah. brought up during the Ohio State interview process and hire of Zach Smith. And Urban Meyer had knowledge of what happened because he was a coach there. Mm-hmm. So I think that's where the whole thing kind of gets Urban Meyer in trouble. So it's the same thing from the previous story. Mm-hmm. Should Urban Meyer have told his future employer of past inc- incidences? In- incidences? Urban Meyer or Zach Smith? Both. Well, they both knew what They what both happened. knew what happened in 09. Yeah. So that's where we come into the gray area again with the corporate world. How much information do you tell mm-hmm. the company and will you be at fault later on for not telling the company certain things? Yeah. So, I mean, I, th- I think you do get in trouble if you say, I've never committed a crime or felony and they do a background check and they realize you did yeah. and you get fired for that. 
Well, if Zach Smith doesn't have a future incident, which we'll we'll talk about, you know, shortly, then this whole thing's a mute point. The yeah. 2009 incident is a mute point if Zach Smith doesn't mess up again. And he doesn't, uh, well, also if he doesn't technically get charged. Yeah. But as we'll, we'll point out now, that wasn't the case. He continued to have not only performance on the field issues, but yeah. off the field marital issues as well. Mm-hmm. So that's where this whole thing got resurfaced. So they tried putting it under the rug. Zach Smith didn't hold up his end. He started misbehaving or, or bringing negative light on himself. Mm-hmm. And this whole thing got dug up. So I think that's what was the what was the event that that took place recently that brought this all to light? Uh, in twenty fifteen, I believe it was that he had the is- incident where he was filing for divorce with his uh, ex wife. Ex wife mm-hmm. uh, at the time, her name is Courtney Smith, and she was even in contact with um, I think her name is Shelly. Oh, Urban Shelley, Urban Shelley Myers Meyer. Wife. Shelley Myers. Yes. Yeah, so Urban Meyer's wife. So that's where it all ties into play. So the mm-hmm. ex-wife of the victim of domestic violence was in contact with mm-hmm. Meyer's wife about domestic violence that was happening. Uh, was sending pictures, and they went to the police. Okay, not necessarily Shelley Meyer, but Corny Smith filed a restraining order, uh, allegedly. Zach Smith again. I'm saying allegedly because he wasn't. It's the verdict still out. Yeah, the verdict still out, and I'm not a jury or judge. Um, he was. I, I think it was trespassing. I think it was criminal trespassing, Crimin- dropping off yeah. his kid at um, his ex wife's yeah uh, a complex. Yeah, fourth so degree was, mis- misdemeanor trespassing. It was yeah. breaking the parental agreement that he had in place. So another issue again happened with this same coach, mm-hmm. and. All these things were coming out to light now. The media is finding out, okay, Zach Smith did this in 09. Zach Smith did this in 14 where he was taking, like you said, mm-hmm. a group of coaches oh, yes. to a strip club. Yeah. And spend- College and high school coaches, which becomes recruiting violations with the NCAA. NCAA. There's so many things. So spend a lot of money there. Yeah. Urban Meyer had to then write a morality clause uh, putting into- yeah. The coaching manual. The coaching manual, saying anything that's detrimental to the team's image or player's image. Um, influence you can be fired for but look at all these incidents why did urban meyer hold on to him and that's where i believe it's a nepotism issue I and that's the whole um that's the whole debacle um debate yeah. on on whether or not urban meyer should be fired or not because yeah he hasn't been criminally charged or hasn't mm-hmm. it's all alleged so far because yeah, mm-hmm. you can't judge it at the moment criminally but all this circumstantial evidence points to Urban Meyer probably should have known what's been going yeah. on. Yeah. And no, he, although he did supposedly report this to the athletic director, mm-hmm. why did he still he keep had, him on board on his staff? Call, he had probable cause to fire him on a myriad of issues. Not only the 09 alleged incident, the 2014 strip club incident, even the 2015 um, you know, criminal trespass incident with his ex-wife. But Urban Meyer in 2013 filled out a performance report like i'm sure coaches across the country fill out performance like evaluation, you do evaluation. It. every major Any corporation, corporation has evaluation does reports. an evaluation across the board he on a one through five scale the almost all of his um grades were a two or a three so mediocre one Medi- out of five average two or three to below five. average yeah. so if you have somebody that's performing at an average to below average rate and has all this off-field drama why hold on to him the only thing, like you said, is nepotism. The relationship that he had with his grandfather, and I'm sure that played a pivotal role in keeping him this this long. That but been, or, or, Urban Meyer's gonna get, gonna and maybe end him up going down the sinking. Him shit. being a mentor, I guess, to this young man because his mentor mm-hmm. was his uh, family member, so he felt like the best way to mentor somebody is, I guess, under their wing. Yeah. Uh, but then we have this moral and ethics issue now in the corporate world because does the not only employer let's yeah. say the manager have well you can say one is an obligation legally mm-hmm. one is an obligation morally or ethically mm-hmm. do they based off the employee's actions now have to be fired with that employee for their action it depends how you handle the situation it depends on your prior knowledge because it depends on urban meyer technically did not lay a finger no, he. But neither did neither did Joe Paterno. That was a massive, massive scandal that happened under his watch with Sandusky. Mm-hmm. For those of you that don't know, the Penn State, there was hundreds of kids 
yeah. for a period of Terrible. several decades that were molested and abused in the Penn State uh, facilities Horrible. and under the watch of Sandusky. Yeah. And I don't know if there was another person involved. That yeah, there's a couple coaches that, that knew. Him. And there was were, were basically common knowledge in their, in, the, in their staff that it was going on. And they kind of like just turned a blind eye, kind of didn't for look years. at it. For years. So, yeah, like you said, they're not participating in the action. But once you have knowledge of a certain set of events, mm-hmm. the whole issue in that Joe Paterno case was Joe Paterno did the bare minimum, which is he passed it up. He told his AD, the athletic director, hey, this he is what's told happening. the board, hey, this is what's happening. So I'm going to let you guys handle it. I'm going to try to get out of it. So then you mean, they, uh, you mean Urban Meyer? No, no, no. no, 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 no we're Paterno talking about Joe Paterno in Penn State. About Joe Paterno in Penn yeah. State. Did he tell his athletic yes, director? He yeah, he yeah. told his athletic yeah, So he, then now does the athletic director and the board and the coaches. So where does the buck fall? Who, oh, fired. Yeah, where does the buck fall? So it's almost like our government in a way. The legislative passes it to the executive. The executive passes it to the judicial. It's a game of hot potato with blame. No one wants the blame. But what happened was Joe Paterno was towards the end of... I I, I don't remember if... I know Joe Paterno already retired. He was at Mm -hmm. the end of his life. I know he ended up passing as this whole thing was going on. Super. So it kind of trying to tarnish his legacy a bit. But like you said, the moral and ethical versus the legal and bare minimum you need to do. Mm Mm-hmm. It's such a gray area that, yeah, everybody needs to do the the legal uh, to cover yourself legally. But we live in a society where we don't just judge off that. We judge based off your ethics, your morals, your actions. So if I know that something like that is so egregious, so mm-hmm. disgusting is happening in my program, there, you have to do more than the bare minimum legally. You have to agree. either take beyond appropriate measures rehab check-ins things like that or cut ties with them completely because it's going to come back and mm-hmm. we live in such a connected age with social media with just fast real-time reporting that it's going to get out there is no hiding under the rug it's going to get out and if you don't get ahead of it you're going to get screwed mm-hmm. and that's covering your ass both from a legal perspective for your job but more importantly for just just a humanitarian issue. About all, like, all, like, all these recruits for both those programs, their parents are going to be like, not only are my children, okay, when mm-hmm. you send them off to school, the, the first 18 years of their life, well, yeah. let's say 15 after they're three, they yeah. are being raised by teachers and coaches and faculty of yeah. that school most of the day. Oh, yeah. Then you send them off on just as important years from 18 to 21 or beyond. Sometimes even more because they're a lot of times they leave home yeah. to different out-of-state colleges. And you're putting them in the yeah. care of these men and women in another city-state mm-hmm. and you're saying, you're raising my child. I'm putting my flesh and blood in your hands. Mm-hmm. And you see someone's actions like this. This man did not step up to help a victim of yeah. alleged domestic violence, why should I trust my child to go there? Well, and now that's where I don't understand Ohio State's board of directors' perspective. Well, this is a matter of this winning games. This is going to kill this recruiting. Is a, this is a matter of winning games. I mean, Urban Meyer isn't, you know, well, he, he, he doesn't have the cleanest background to, uh, as far as his, his programs. In UF, he had over 30 players that were arrested at, I won't, I had throughout his that. tenure. And one of them was a murderer. That is in, well, he, well, he didn't commit the murders in, yeah, in I, college, but... Aaron Hernandez was... He already left, but that's still... But you could say players. some of the building years mm-hmm. of that young man's life no, no. What were to, not molded correctly for him to create that crime that could be one of the arguments that you can make I'm not saying that that's well, what it is at, but they say the same thing with the University of Miami Hurricanes in the 90s and the, th- and the 2000s when they called it Thug U mm-hmm. and we had all these players that had bad criminal records or backgrounds in general you know oh they're putting wins over uh, over you know personal education, education student and so, athlete well yeah. it's still going on today it's still going on today UF when Urban Meyer was there, 30 plus players arrested you, I'm sure if you look across all these top D1 programs, yeah. they all have at least a dozen players that have been arrested over their time. Mm-hmm. And I'll guarantee you that they don't get rid of all of them. If you're so, a star athlete, if you're a stud, a five-star recruit, you're yeah, getting a second so and a third chance. Think, but if you're a, a, a you know 50th player on the roster, if you're like barely made yeah. a cut, you're screwed. You're un, you're done. So let me ask you a side question. And, and this is going to be a big issue. And I hope that this, this hits home for all you guys. Is this a culture issue? Because you don't see a lot. You do see it. Right, because there's a minor league baseball player who went and uh, abused his girlfriend a couple of years ago, and it was on camera. It was just released. Oh my gosh! A horrendous yes. video. I, I would want to beat that man 
What yeah. A, what an it was in the man. It was in the elevator. It was, in the it was staircase, like in the staircase. 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 Like what? the Rangers. Oof. I think. Yeah. That if that's my sister or family or even Perry, like yeah, whatever. But you don't see that as often in baseball and basketball and golf and tennis and, and any other sport. Football is just the common denominator. I don't know if they said they get more coverage or they get more investigations, but football is a common denominator of violence. I mean, like, there's more cases. There's of, more cases of, violence, of criminal athletes, uh, like no violence, domestic uh, issues. violence, issues in general with the athletes in college and the pros in football. Is then there isn't any other sport. But is it culturally, or it could be part of their job description is violence. So then that's another argument that they're like you have to play. I mean, I played football all throughout my formative mm-hmm. years and through high school. So you have to be a different animal. Sometimes you, they may you're on the field. You gotta flip the switch, and you gotta just whoever's across from you, like you gotta Finish rip them. their head off. Yeah. You gotta kill them, figuratively speaking. Sometimes uh, you're you're going at them and you're mm-hmm. hitting them as hard as you can. You gotta just take them out. Mm-hmm. So when you get off the field, flipping the switch. Also, you have the CTE uh, studies that have been coming out the last you know several years of a lot of these. CT, uh, you know, I think I was watching the Joe Rogan podcast the other day. He was referencing CTE studies with Neil deGrasse Tyson and. They have there's kids that as early as middle and high school that are showing signs of CTE. Our nephew just started playing football and he had to do the the baseline yeah. test for concussion protocol so they know if he has a crazy hit, they'll take him to see if you're suffering something. So, so those you are have, all variables. So is this then these issues like Urban Myers or all these football players, is this one of the things that and we coaches just and staff. Deal, and coaches and staffs, everybody. Yeah. Do we deal with this as a society? For the entertainment, because if you think about it, football and the players are the gladiators of our oh, like society. The Roman, like the Roman, like the Roman the gladiators from back and- like Maximus Decimus Aurelius, Commander of the Legions of the North. I'm sorry, Gladiator, my favorite movie. Um, they were the barbarians, yeah, and they entertained. Are you not entertained? They entertained all these people yeah. by killing one another in an arena. We have that same thing now in football modernized in football modernized but back in the day the gladiators they didn't live free lives now we have these gladiators that are banging each other living these free lives is football yeah and, and the hitting and the cte like you're saying yeah is this what's creating this issue and i think that's a great study that we w- yeah. we don't know now but we'll figure it out well, i mean we'll throw that out to the audience like what do you think it is do you think it's you know cte brain injury do you think it's a cultural thing where you know, they just promoting this violence. You know, what are your thoughts? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have very yeah. strong opinions. And on should it. Urban Meyer have gotten a worse punishment? Is the punishment you think fit? Or should oh, he have not been punished at all? I mean, that's that's something I'm definitely up for debate. And we'll wait to see what the verdict's still out on that. Yeah. But I think, quick segue, we're going to do a quick uh, fake news segment. Very I'm sure fake. they loved it. The last time we talked about, what was the fake story? It was uh, Florida. All right, so I got three stories that... I think I'm going to catch you slipping. All right, the first one. No, I tie my shoelaces. What? Oh, you stupid. <laughs> okay, the first story. Baby boom at Arizona hospital. 16 nurse is pregnant. I ain't drinking that water. Uh, I mean, the photo, they're pretty cute. So. Uh, are they all female? <laughs> oh, this is... A, this is a, <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Story number two. Man calls police. Help, I'm being chased by a baby squirrel. Liberal. Okay. Oh, <laughs> you just, this is going from straight funny to the most political themed segment. All right. Number three, Hangover's Ken Jong to star in Manti Teo's The Mama of All Hoaxes. Cam Jong? Yeah. Like the, hey, ha, the hey, ha, hey. that, that guy. Yeah. Oh, you fuck on me? Okay. Sucking these Chinese so, nuts. I actually saw the title for the 16 pregnant nurses. So that's real. They all they all have titles. No, 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 like I saw the story. Oh, you saw the story. It's, it's legit. Ah, it's legit, which is crazy. Like, how do, how does that happen? In one hospital, that's impressive. Is it like two baby daddies? I hope it's That'd one. That'd be even more. I hope impressive. it's just one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. savage. No, um, hmm. The baby squirrel doesn't sound real, but watch is gonna be the real one. But no, nah. Nope, I think the baby squirrel's real. The baby squirrel and the pregnant woman. So, so the other one's fake. The other one's fake. Ah, man. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I thought you I thought you'd like to hang over one. I thought you'd get it. 
All right, so the baby boom in Arizona hospital. This is a Banner Desert Medical Center. 16 women pregnant, and they're all expecting to give birth between October and January. Holy, that's crazy. What? That's literally a whole unit. Yeah, do that, they're taking like group Are they photos. all in the same unit? I don't know. It doesn't say Like, here. are they all like in the step down or ICU or maternity or something like that? I mean, it'd be ironic if they're maternal. Uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't say. No, it doesn't say they're in the same unit or anything. That's crazy, and it actually ties in, you know, with both our stories it's today. Just they're, yeah, they're all gonna take. It says here, um, there's a group of floating nurses that are gonna help take, like, cover their workload. Because no, that, it's a good thing with with hospitals that they have travel nurses you too. Know, you know, it's 16 nurses that take a three month maternity leave Should within see? like. That's, weeks that's literally day and night shift for a whole unit. Yeah, you're, if that's a whole unit, you're done. Like, like, well, they, they could do. Yeah, that's crazy. Can you imagine? The uh, baby squirrel one was also the real one. He, uh, officers received a call to help and arrived to see an animal still chasing the caller. Oh, so the cops got there and it was still chasing oh, him. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I would have died laughing. Just recorded. I just like pull up. Sir, are you okay? Click. Oh, it was in Germany. It's in Germany. Oh, that's oh, Jam it's German. It's German squares. It's German. And they even tweeted about it in German. So I can't even, I can't even read the tweet. But here it says, she said it could be pretty scary and that the caller was certainly feeling a bit threatened. <laughs> How do you feel a bit threatened? <laughs> what are you laughing at? Is there something different? <laughs> I was trying to like, I think it didn't happen. But yeah, we've had it, it happened. We've had it all this episode. So just to wrap it up, maternity leave, it's all over between hospitals in Arizona and getting fired over it. Urban Meyer, verdict still out and technical difficulty here on set. But we're gonna leave it off. I think you have a funny video to leave it off. I do have a funny video, but check it out on the outro because it's gonna be a <laughs> pooper. Yeah, check it out. Stay tuned to next week. This is Ramos Mendez. Thanks for watching everybody. This was another episode of the Ramos Rundown. Do me a favor, like the video, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell. You already know what the deal is. Now, enjoy this amazing story of a fat security guard farting for six months. I couldn't even contain myself. It is a great video, so check it out. This is gonna be our reaction. Oh, way. <laughs> Where you, where you his eyes? <laughs> <laughs> oh. And he looks what around. And he looks one? around. What is guy? <laughs> Yo, no, 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 no,